flying through the night, the powers and gifts of the Dark Lord by her side. The heretical witch, en route to the Black Sabbath was the sight of terror and fear. The black cat, dark robes and large brimmed hat are all typical items we come to recognize to be associated with witches. However, none is more stereotypical and misunderstood than the broom, the besom. Witches' covens were known to gather in the middle of the night in deep forest by bonfires. How was it that these mysterious wielders of the dark arts were able to command a simple object as a broom to do their bidding? To fly countless miles across lands to sojourn with the Dark Lord himself in sexually charged rituals granting them ever more dark powers. Envoy K and Miss J look into the true history of the witch's broom or besom. Witch's flying ointment, green ointment, magic salve, lycanthropic ointment, witch's salve, flying salve, sabbath unguent, or sleeping unguent. It goes by many names, but without understanding what witch's flying ointment was, it's not possible to understand how they flew and conducted their sabbaths. Francis Bacon, attributed as Lord Verulam, listed the ingredients of the witch's ointment as the fat of children digged out of their graves, of juices of smallage, wolfbane and zinc foil, mingled with the meal of fine wheat. Typical poisonous ingredients included belladonna, henbane bell, jimson weed, black henbane, mandrake, hemlock, and or wolfsbane, most of which contain atropine, hyoscyamine, and or scopolamine. Scopolamine can cause psychotropic effects when absorbed transdermally. These tropane alkaloids are also officially classified as delirians in regards to the psychoactive effects. The plants most frequently recorded as ingredients in early modern recipes for flying ointments are extremely toxic and have caused numerous fatalities when eaten, whether by confusion with edible species or in cases of criminal poisoning or suicide. It has been the subject of discussion between clergymen as to whether witches were able physically to fly to the Sabbath on their brooms with the help of the ointment, or whether such flight was explicable in other ways. A delusion created by the devil in the minds of the witches? The souls of the witches leaving their bodies of flying spirit to the Sabbath? Or a hallucinatory trip facilitated by the entheogenic effects of potent drugs absorbed through the skin? Dominican churchman Ptolemyo Spina of Pisa gives two accounts of the power of the flying ointment in his Tractatus Distributus Civi Maleficis, Treatise on Witches or Evil Doers of 1525. The first concerns an incident in the life of his acquaintance Augustus de Turi of Bergamo, a physician. While studying medicine in Pavia as a young man, Augustus returned late one night to his lodgings without a key to find no one awake to let him in. Climbing up to a balcony, he was able to enter through a window and at once sought out the maidservant, who should have been awake to admit him. On checking her room, however, he found her lying unconscious, beyond rousing, on the floor. The following morning he tried to question her on the matter, but she would only reply that she had been on a journey. Bartolomeo's second account is more suggestive and points toward another element in the witch's flights. It concerns a certain notary of Lugano who, unable to find his wife one morning, searched for her all over their estate and finally discovered her lying deeply unconscious, naked and filthy with her vagina exposed in a corner of the pigsty. The notary immediately understood that she was a witch and at first wanted to kill her on the spot, but thinking better of such rashness, waited until she recovered from her stupor in order to question her. Terrified by his wrath, the poor woman fell to her knees and confessed that during the night she had been on a journey. Some sources have claimed that such an ointment would best be absorbed through mucous membranes and that the traditional image of a female witch astride a broomstick implies the application of flying ointment to the vulva. Ergot, when absorbed through the thin tissues of the female genitals, the hallucinogenic effects were more pronounced with less ill effects. The modern image of a witch riding a broomstick was inspired by the sight of a woman rubbing herself on the drug-coated smooth stick of her broom, writhing in the throes of hallucinations and no doubt some intense pleasure as well. During the time leading up to the witchcraft trials in Europe, the bread was made with rye, 
In a small town where the bread was fresh baked, this was just fine. But as Europe began to urbanize and the bread took more time to get from bakery to grocer, the rye bread began to host a mold called ergot. Ergot, in high doses, can be lethal, a fact that led to the rise in popularity of wheat bread. In smaller doses, ergot is a powerful hallucinogenic drug. It became quite popular among those who were inclined towards herbalism and folk cures. The study of ergot later led to discovery of LSD. What is thought to have happened is that these witches would apply their flying bomb to the brooms, which would then be absorbed through genitalia into themselves. The hallucinations and their beliefs would then have them believe they were flying and having magical experiences. To the fearful people who saw this or heard their stories, this was black magic, and akin to dealings with the devil. The sexual nature of broom and bomb led to the concept of the black sabbath and orgies with the devil. In pagan rituals, as a tool, the broom is seen to balance both masculine energies, the phallic handle, and female energies, the bristles. It's used in many traditions as a method of cleansing or purifying a space. In some cultures, the rite of jumping the broom is considered an important part of a marriage ceremony. Many pagan traditions have the bridal couple jump across the broom during a hand fasting as a symbol of fertility and to signify the establishment of their new household. Prior to childbirth, women used a broom to sweep the threshold of the home, both for protection and to prepare the way for the new spirit to enter. Many witches keep a besom by the door, or hanging over their door to protect the home from unwanted outside energies. The besom is a purifier and is related to the elements of water. They have been used by witches to indicate to other occultists that they were residents or at work by placing a besom, a broom, outside the door. A besom should always be stood upright when not in use as a sign of respect for the elements. Well, a little bit of history for you there, eh? Never knew that about the broom. I don't know how many of you guys did, but it's all news to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this historical episode and don't forget to stay tuned for our Christmas specials. They're sure to be scary. Just like Santa Claus. Yes. Hope you guys like this witch broom video. I made it with my heart. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share. Alright, bye bye. See you next one.